Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Nurse Talks Hockey. So, I want to do this episode based on two players, Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby. There is quite the conversation with the fans that have been watching hockey since Crosby was put into the league when he was drafted. People have said Crosby is the best player since um, Lemieux. Now, people who started watching hockey more recently, back in like 2014, 15, 16, maybe even 2019, 20, people have been saying Connor McDavid is better. I want to figure out who's the actual better player. I've been trying to find advanced stats for every player that I have searched up um, for a while. I don't know any of the advanced stats websites. Um, I wish I did, but I just I can't find them. For some reason, I am just so bad at finding advanced stats. It's insane. Anyways, so, um, with each, um, with each draft, there's always a player that people are like, this is the next best player. This player, he's going to surprise everybody. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you hear that all the time. And it's just odd hearing that about every single player I don't know why we keep seeing that um, but we do and I know with Connor Bedard that's a different that's different Connor Bedard's different that kid is looking like a superstar in the making all right Bedard and Mitchkov they seem like the um, the Crosby and Ovechkin or the McDavid and Matthews of the league. It, it just seems like that's going to happen. Bedard, I don't see Bedard taking a really big tumble. I don't see him being this player that breaks a bunch of records just to not perform in the NHL. I don't see that happening. With Shane Wright, I can kind of see that happening, but I don't really as well. We've already had two. We've had we've had draft. We had 2020 draft. Um, Alexi Lafreniere just is not seeming like the, seeming like the player that we want him to be. Of course, he's on the Rangers. They're 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 a good team by a lot of standards, but he's just not able to perform great with that team. I think if he was on a team like Ottawa or New Jersey, or if he was even on a team like um, shoot, if he was on Buffalo, I think he would thrive. But since he's on the Rangers, they already have their star forwards in, in Artemi Panarin, Mika Zibanejad, and Chris Kreider. That kind of makes it tough for Lafreniere to get that chance to play more minutes. He's only playing, like, what, 10, 11 minutes a game on average in, in the regular season. I don't know how it's in playoffs, but he doesn't play a lot. But, I mean, Jack Hughes is turning out really well. Um... Dolene is starting to turn out pretty well. Owen Power is looking like a future star for the Buffalo Sabres. And then we have Shane Wright. Shane Wright is going to go number one. The only way I don't see Wright going number one is if they think that Suzuki is either as good or better. But even then, I'm pretty sure Suzuki also plays right wing. So if we could see a Caulfield, Wright, and Suzuki line, that'd be deadly for one. But I just don't see a world where Shane Wright does not get taken by Montreal. Because the fact is, Montreal has their star center, but he can also play right wing. If Shane Wright does drop for some reason to number two, he's not being taken by New Jersey. New Jersey wants to trade that pick anyways. They're going to get something great out of that pick if a team does trade for it. Um, I could see Buffalo trying to get it. Um, I, I could see them trading somebody. Um, I could see possibly Ottawa trying to get that, trading away a player that they thought would work out. Um, yeah, I, I, could, I could see a lot of teams going for that second overall pick. It's going to be a lot, but it will be taken because New Jersey doesn't want it. But even then, New Jersey doesn't need a center. I don't think they take right. Um, Arizona? Arizona would. They don't have a star center right now. 
I mean, they have Nick Schmaltz, but he's not going to be that star. Clayton Keller has not has not turned out the way that anybody wanted him to. I love Clayton Keller. He just hasn't panned out the way that we all thought he would. Um, this season was great. He had a career year this year, I believe. Really great stuff by him. I just... he He's not performing the way that his contract shows that he would. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So I want to talk about McDavid and Crosby. Both of them, first overall picks. Um, obviously, McDavid, the most recent. McDavid's only 25, I believe. Um, let me make sure of that, actually. Yeah, he's 25. Um, and I'm trying to find the advanced metrics. Or the advanced stats, I should say. Because I want to know. I, I really want to know the advanced stats of both these players because it has proven useful for... It's been useful learning the stats, the, the advanced stats of each player. Is it the most effective? No. But who cares? On ice goals for 60 minutes in all situations. Okay, here we go. It, it, it's kind of what I want. It's not exactly what I want, but I guess it's kind of what I want. Um, until I found that for... Um, for McDavid not to find Crosby. Both players, extremely talented players. What in the world? Okay. <laughs> I just saw something really funny. Um, okay, hockey reference is what I'm using. I know there's a better one to use that has like different charts. I just don't know which one that is. I'm pretty sure it's paid for that anyways. And I don't really want to pay for anything. Um, all right, this is what I have it on, I believe. I don't think it's rate metrics. That's what it is. Now, obviously, um, Crosby played a lot more games. McDavid has played 487 games, while Crosby, Crosby has played 948 games. So as we look at the rate metrics between both players, um, let's see. I don't know what this means. Corsi against... You know, I wish I knew what that meant. The first thing I see here is that Crosby has always had a higher on ice goals for per 60 minutes. Oh, that's. Oh, oops. I'm looking. No, I am looking the right thing. Um, better goals for than McDavid has. But McDavid does have better numbers in some seasons. Now, Crosby, 2011 2012, he had a 6.8 on ice goals per game. That is insane. Now, he did only play 22 games, now that I'm looking at it. That was a concussion year. He has a lot of those. One thing to know with Crosby, while he may not have the games played that you would... Wait, this thing lied to me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for the... Um, uh, I'm sorry for the lies here. Um, Crosby's played 1,108 games. I don't know why it showed differently. And Crosby has... It, not Crosby. And McDavid has played 487. No. Yeah, 487. I don't know why I showed differently for Crosby in one. But, yeah. Um, I guess that's, I think that's counting every, like, a somewhat full season. Crosby has not played a full season except for once. Maybe twice. I think twice was closest to what I could see. But Crosby has not played a lot of games. And the reason for that is because he is injury ridden. He is always getting injured. Whether it's um, a concussion or a wrist injury, there's always something wrong. Like, I'm, I'm going to go down to the games played. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about 81, 79, 53, 77, 81, 41, 22, lowest, the lowest he's ever had, 36. 80, 77, 80, 75, 82, 79, 41, 55, shortened season, and then 69. And I guess 1920 was also a shortened season, but I think Pittsburgh played 70 games that year, so he's injured. It's, yeah, it, you can see that there is a bit of a, um, bit of a bad run for Crosby throughout his career. He's missed a lot of games, and I feel really bad for the guy because he does not deserve that. He could be breaking so many records, but because of the injuries that he's had, it just hasn't happened. Um, 
but he has put up a lot of points. 1,409, 1,108 games played, 1,409 points. That is insane. That is amazing just how well he's been able to play. All right, so I'm looking through... Um, I'm looking through the extra stats. I don't think it counted a couple. I think they got something wrong, which is why it's only showing 948 games played. So I'm sorry about 940. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why it showed that before. But um, so we look at, as I was saying, we look at the goals for um, Crosby has a better goals for um, on ice per game, which um or, or for per 60 minutes in all situations that is every single situation um crosby also has less goals against now crosby has always been on a good team so that that number is going to go up the goals for and it's going to go down for the goals against they've always had that star defender while the oilers do have a star defender but he's not as good as latang ever he'll never be as good as latang was and it kind of goes the same for Crosby and Malkin and Latang. That core is just so good. They could put up points. They could keep everything out of the net with Mark Andre Fleury in that. So there is a little bit of an issue looking at these because of the goaltender on each team and also the defense on each team. You can't get an accurate number unless they go by, like, if you just have an average goaltender in net and you have an average defend defender core and it's just this player playing. You won't get accurate numbers because of the teams that these players have played on. Crosby has been on a uh, has been on a great team. They've made the playoffs sixteen years in a row, I believe. I believe it is. So yeah, and the Oilers have made the playoffs um, a few times since. I think has it been every year. I don't think it's been every year since um, McDavid's been on the Oilers. I don't think close to that actually. But um. And I want to look for goals per 60 minutes. Um, so Crosby averages out at about 1.3, 1.4. McDavid aver averages out at about 1.4, 1.5. So a bit higher for McDavid. Um, really good numbers for McDavid. Uh, absolutely astounding play by the kid. I really like the way he's played uh, throughout his entire career. And just shows that he can get a lot of goals. But he's not a goal scorer. That's the thing. He's a playmaker. And that's where this gets interesting. McDavid has a bit higher assists per 60 minutes than Crosby does in his career. Um, I'm not going to count 2011-2012 because he only played 22 games. That's not at all accurate. On average, Crosby has about 2.1 to 2.2. While McDavid has 2.4. Maybe even 2.5, because in 2020-2021, Crosby had one of the best seasons that you will ever see in modern NHL history. Uh, for those who may not know, um, McDavid hit 100 points last season. There were only 56 games in the season, so he played really well. Um, now, going through points per game, Cr McDavid has a higher in 2010-2011, there's only 41 games, mind you. If we go by more than 50 games, then um, Crosby's highest in over 50 games looks to be 1.35. Nope, 1.52. 1.52, while McDavid's in 56 games was 1.88. That is very high if, you, if you're wondering... Um, so they also did an adjusted, I'm guessing what the adjusted does is, yeah, normalized to an 82 game schedule, this is what they predict, um, for these players having. So for Sidney Crosby, the adjusted totals in 2010, 2011 would have been 71 points and have a full season, 41 points in 2011, 2012 is adjusted to a regular 82 game schedule. So some of the numbers are a bit off still. Um, yeah, he had 37 points. I don't know why they put him so low for points during that. Um, really odd. I just thought that he would become like a big bust in the middle of everything. But you know what? I'm not going to say anything. Um, McDavid, let's look at like point totals now. Because it is interesting to look at the point totals between the two players. So, 
Cross McDavid in seven years. He has 25 years old, seven years of experience compared to Crosby's. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, compared to McDavid has seven years. Crosby has 17. All right. Crosby has played 1,108 games with 1,409 points. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. McDavid in his seven years, 487 games played, 697 points. So he has 210 more points in games played, while Crosby has 301. So compared to the years that Crosby has played, along with McDavid in his years played, compared to his points, that's very close. Um, but um, Crosby's been injured more, like I said. McDavid's had some injury issues. Um, 45 games played in his rookie year because of an injury caught a purposeful injury by the way for those who don't know mcdavid had a really bad injury and the guy who injured him admitted that he did it on purpose he was then traded to the oilers peter shirley what were you thinking anyways so yeah the points for mcdavid absolutely outstanding for the amount of games played and mcdavid's dealt with injuries before not as much as crosby by far but McDavid still has dealt with shortened seasons and all that all that sort of stuff. Now, Crosby's career started in 2005-2006 when he was 18 years old. That was after the 2005 lockout. In the 2000 the 2004-2005 season was canceled because of a lockout and nobody was able to play then. Thankfully, Crosby was 18 when he was drafted, so he was able to play when he was young. He didn't have to wait until he was 19 to play a game. He was 18, which is great. And in his rookie year, 81 games played in 102 points, while, Cros while McDavid had 45 games played in 48 points. Obviously, Crosby had the better rookie year, but the Penguins also had some better players on that team. But that doesn't really matter because getting... Getting a point per game, or not not point per game, sorry. Getting that many points in your rookie year, impressive. But do you know what's even, you know what's even more impressive? Despite having 102 points in his rookie, rookie year, Crosby did not win the Calder Trophy. He was second. Who won the Calder Trophy that year? I wish I remember these things, but I don't. I wasn't watching the NHL at this time. I started watching in 2008. Oh, Ovechkin won. Ovechkin won the Conn Smythe Trophy, or not Conn Smythe, the Calder Trophy in um, 05 06, 52 goals, 54 assists for a total of 106 points, while Crosby had 102. So, yeah. Is that, am I right about that? Yeah, that's, that's 106 points. And Crosby had 102. So, yeah, Ovechkin did deserve that. But this is how you knew that these two players are going to be special when in their rookie years they hit 100 points. So, we're going to go by 100-point seasons now. And, again, remember, Crosby's been injured a lot. He has a lot of years where he did not play 80, 70, even 60 games. So, in total, Crosby has one, two, three, four, five, six hundred point seasons. McDavid has one, two, three, four, five. Very, very impressive. In seven years he has five while Crosby has seven and seventeen. Very impressive numbers by McDavid here. But again, Crosby was injured. And whenever players injured that really affects their point totals for their career, everybody knows that. I think Crosby's missed over two hundred games in total because of injuries. So, he should be getting, he should have like 1,600 points in total um, with the extra 200 games, so about 1,200 games, about 1,600 points, but that's still around the same number, averaging 100 points um, in his career, pretty much. Um, now, if we go back to the, um, I think it's the miscellaneous, it's points per game. So... This is where it gets interesting. I'm looking at hockey reference. NHL miscellaneous. This has the points per game. This has everything you need to know. 
Now, I remember Crosby's played 10 more years. The numbers are going to be a bit more averaged out than McDavid's will. Crosby averaged 1.27 points per game, while McDavid has averaged 1.43. McDavid has had a lot of impressive seasons. Um, he's never gone below a point per game, nor has Crosby. Extremely impressive. For assists per game, um, I think, yeah, McDavid is above in assists per game as well. Now, this doesn't matter with um, the games that Crosby has missed because this doesn't account for an 82 um, game season for a player. It just accounts for how many games they played. And when it comes to percentages, it doesn't really matter as much when you look at that because it doesn't matter how many games you play in a season, your points total doesn't really change if you miss a few games. So, yeah, uh, missing games does not make you have a zero point um, per game for the games that you missed. It's not how it works. So these numbers are way more accurate than you will see when it comes to point totals, when it comes to games played, when it comes to really anything. So yeah, um, 0 0.81 assists per game for Sidney Crosby, and then 0 0.94 for McDavid. Outstanding numbers. And even then, McDavid's above in goals per game too. Um, 0 0.47 for Crosby. 0 0.49 for McDavid. Very impressive. Those are those are very impressive. And now at this is just goals created per game or goals created. I don't f fully know what this means exactly, but it looks like Crosby's better than in that than McDavid is mostly. I, I really cannot tell you what that means exactly, so I'm not going to try and um, talk about that. Oh, here we go. There's actually a better um, stat for it. Okay, goals created per game, 0 0.47 for Sidney Crosby. For McDavid, 0 0.52. A bit better for McDavid again. Shots per game. This is where it gets a bit interesting. So, um, Crosby and... McDavid, they're kind of a mix of playmaker and sniper. They both are very good at making plays and finishing plays. They are very good at anything they need to do. Um, that being said, the shots per game for Crosby, 3.19. And for McDavid, 3.28. So, it looks like Crosby might have a bit of a better shot percentage than McDavid would. It does not have the shot percentage on here, but it does seem like it's a bit better. Now, this is a stat that I was looking for and I just saw it now. Expected goals for. This stat is used very often and it's good. It's goals for, expected goals for, expected goals against. If you guys don't know exactly where that means expected goals for this is the description i'm reading on hockey reference expected for goals for given where shots came from for and against while this player is on the ice at even strength is based on where the shots are coming from compared to the league-wide shooting percentage for that shot location so it's um it's a useful stat all right useful stat um i really like using it i like seeing it it's become more useful over the years as people have learned more about it so, oh my lord. Um, so they didn't start tracking goals for and goals against until the 2014-15 season. That was a year before McDavid joined the league. Um, overall, uh, McDavid has a better goals for, but a worse goals against per game. Um, the best season McDavid had when it came to goals for was this season, actually. 84.2 um, XGF very good the best Crosby had 68.4 not quite as good as McDavid um McDavid actually has two seasons where he's a or three where he's above um 60 like in the 60s he has a 68.6 but he has 77.1 in 2016-17 where he played a full season 82.0 full season again and then 84.2 missed two games so yeah um when it comes to Crosby, his best ones, 82 games, 68.4. You're going to get more for the more games you play. Um, and then where's the next one? 64.8, 80 games played. 
a 64.269 games played. So Crosby is not as good as McDavid when it comes to the expected goals for. Um, when it comes to expected goals against, Crosby is a bit better. Um, some seasons are very bad for Connor McDavid, which Crosby doesn't get anywhere near. Uh, McDavid has three seasons where he's in the 60s. Crosby has zero. And Crosby even had Crosby had a season, not a full season, again, 28.6. But if we go by, like, fuller seasons, 53.7. That's not bad. That's his only 82-game season that he has when it comes to expected goals for and expected goals against. Um, very good numbers for the expected goals against. It just shows how good Crosby is when he's doing offense or defense. And it shows how good he is when it comes to that. McDavid, again, um, it could also be because of the players on the ice. Whenever Crosby's on the ice, you can expect Latang. Whenever McDavid's on the ice, you can expect Nurse. Nurse is not nearly as good as Latang. But still, these numbers show that Crosby is better when it comes to goals against. So. Yeah, and this is a season more, so the expected goals for is actually a lot better for McDavid, while the expected goals against is a lot worse. So it just shows that Crosby has better defense, defensive stats, and McDavid has worse defensive stats but better offensive stats. So yeah, um, I'm not going to do the plus minus. Plus minus is a very use useless stat when it comes to this. But if we talk about defenders, that's when it gets a bit more useful. I know people don't like plus minus as a stat, but if you look at the stats, if you look and see how well a player is doing, if you look by game by game, you can see when a defenseman does pretty bad um, in a game. Plus minus, not super reliable, but it is somewhat reliable. It is one that you should use if in the right circumstance. So just want to put that out there. All right, yeah, so if I had to make a decision right now, if I, I know Crosby has 10 more years of experience and McDavid only has 7, 7 and 17, a very big gap. Um, Crosby has played 10 more years. It's it, it's very hard to say who's better. And I'm somebody who's been watching the NHL since 2008. <laughs> Um, I started watching the Lightning. I like their logo. I like Stamkos. I started watching the Lightning, and pretty much the, I, I watched any game I could. I lived in Texas, and hockey wasn't that big in Texas at the time, so I didn't get a lot of hockey channels to watch. I usually watched it when I was at my grandparents' place in Canada, <laughs> or if I was in Iowa, there would sometimes be games on. But um, yeah. Even as somebody who has watched hockey for the last 13, 14 years, I do have to say I think McDavid is better than two players overall. The stats kind of say it themselves, the advanced stats, the regular stats, the points per game, goals, assists per game. The fact that it's all higher for McDavid than it is for Crosby just kind of shows that McDavid is a better offensive presence. And these two players being um, offensive players... Uh, Crosby being an elite grinder, that's the way I've heard him called lately. And then McDavid just being a great sniper and playmaker. It just seems to me that McDavid is the better of the two overall. Um, I, know that Cros I know that Crosby's had more injuries than McDavid has or probably ever will. But the, the stats don't lie. When it comes to the points per game, goals per game, and assists per game, you can't really blame the injuries on that. It's just kind of how it is. And McDavid is the better of the two in goals for goals per game, assists per game, and points per game. And I think even goals created, he's better in. Yeah. So, and shots. Um, so, Crosby is just way better offensively. Crosby is... Crosby's better defensively, McDavid offensively, but if we had to go by pretty much everything mixed together, I do have to say that McDavid is a better player um, overall. And again, just looking through all seasons, even the recent ones, I know that Crosby is getting up there in age. I think he's, what, he's 35 now? <laughs> no, 34. Okay. he He's 34. Um, and 
Um, I know he's older, but he's still an elite player. McDavid, just an all-around great player. <laughs> um, there is one more thing I want to look at, though, um, and it is playoff stats. Now, playoff stats are always fun to look at. Um, I think everybody can agree on that, that they're fun to look at. Now, um, I, I, these, are, these are updated. Um, I think they update every day on Hockey Reference, which is very nice. Um, so, the best season Crosby ever had in the playoffs, 2008-2009, um, um, let's see, yeah, 2008-2009, I think, that's, no, I think Pittsburgh, that's when Pittsburgh lost, no, that's when they won, that's when Pittsburgh won, um, the Stanley Cup, um, 31 points, pl- 31 points, um, in total, and McDavid's best is 29, or 26, here's the catch, though, and this is quite something. And with 26 points, McDavid's only played 12 games. Yeah. Um, for Crosby, those 31 points were in 24 games. McDavid has played half those games so far, and he has 26 points. That's five less than Crosby. Now, if we look at playoff success over the years, again... I know that Crosby's had more, has played more seasons. Obviously, no, no duh. But yeah, I just, I mean, there's no denying that Connor McDavid is special. McDavid, he made it to the second round in 2016-17. Um, he had nine points in 13 games, but he was also only 20. So he was still relatively young. You can't really say anything about that when he's that young. I know Crosby won. I know Crosby had thirty-one points in those twenty-four games in oh eight oh nine. But still, <laughs> still, I mean, you can't really. <sighs> I know that's young. 21's young. 20's young as well. 27 points in 20 games played. McDavid was also on a team that should not have made the playoffs in 16-17. So, yeah. Now, in 2020-2021, this is where things kind of get weird. This is the average time on ice. Um, I don't think Crosby has ever had this. Me- yeah, he's never had this average before. He actually hasn't been close to it. You know how last season um, the Oil- Oilers were swept? Um, you know how bad they were against the Jets? They gave up that like four to one lead, I think it was. Do I know how? Do you want? Do you want to know the average time on ice for McDavid? A forward. Thirty minutes and twenty four seconds. Now, if you don't know, that's a lot. That is a lot of time for any player. I mean, just look at the numbers yourself. That's a lot of time. That is so much time. So much time to be on the ice. I'm going to look at Seth Jones. Seth Jones, in the 2020-2021 season, this was a season where their first game went to 5 OT. All right? 5 OT. His average time on ice was 1920, 32 minutes and 40 seconds. He had a game, if I'm correct, he played like 60 minutes. I want to I want to double check that just so you know. I, I want to uh, check that real quick. Because I, I I don't know the exact time, but I know that um, I, I know that Seth Jones nearly made history. Oh wait, no, here it is. One playoff game, yeah. Um, he beat Sergei Zubov, Zubov and Darnell Nurse. Um, 
the, the Darnell Nurse one's really bad too. Because in this game, I don't think the game went to double OT. It may, I think it did go to double OT actually. But this is really bad. So Seth Jones, 5 OT, 65 minutes on ice. That's an hour. That's over an hour on the ice. When the average shift length, I think, for defenders is a minute and 30. A minute and 30 seconds. That's a lot. 5 OT. That is two games in, the, in two periods. That's a lot of time to play hockey. I remember I was on a drive from a hotel in some random state to Iowa. It was our last day of driving. And my dad was asking me, like, what was going on in the game? Because I kept telling him, oh, I was going to another OT. I said that to him so much that he thought I was lying. I thought my app was broken because it just kept saying that the game was going to OT. It went to OT, and I was like, oh, great, this isn't going to be good. It went to 2 OT, I was like, okay, yeah, that happens. 3 OT, this is odd. 4 OT, I thought my phone was broken. It went to 5 OT, and then got an ESPN notification saying that it's going to 5 OT from, like, a, a, a whole article. 65 minutes on ice is really... That's that's a lot. Sir Guy Zubov... Got 63 minutes and 51 seconds on ice. Um, I don't know what that game went to. Just so you know, I don't know what these games went to. I think... I know the Seth Jones one went to 5 OT. I think the Darnell Nurse one went to 2 OT. This is why this is so bad. 62 minutes on ice. For Darnell Nurse. That's a lot. That's, that's over... That's over a whole game. Now, all the highest time on ice are defenders, except for a few people, because these people are like some of the best players you'll see. But this is in one game. This is like Yarmir Ye Yarmir Yager is on here. Fifty nine minutes on ice. What do you expect from Yarmir Yager? You also have um, Alexei Kovalev and Mike Madano. So. You have a lot of players on here. A lot of forwards are on here. There are ones that are pretty well known. Ones that you wouldn't be, are, you're not surprised are on here because there were a lot of people who um, there were, there are a lot of people who um, played a lot of minutes back in like the early 2000s, even the 90s, and all that. They played a lot of minutes on the ice just so they had a bigger advantage. And players, it, it sometimes felt like the players were on crack. Now, um, here's another thing that I want to talk about with that August 11th game, the 5 OT one, um, with the Blue Jackets and Lightning. Seth Jones played 65 minutes. Zach Wierenski played 61 minutes. Victor Hemman only played 57 minutes. And when you know, when you see that there are players on the other team that have played more minutes than your best defender on the other team. You can tell that the defensive depth is pretty bad on that team, which is true for Columbus. It was really true. They they had Jones and Wierenski. That's kind of it. Savard was kind of going downhill at that point, so he wasn't getting as much ice time. But, yeah, I mean, absolutely insane just how much they played. Yeah, David Savard only played 51 minutes that game. I can't believe I, I, cannot believe I said only, but... You know, things happen. Ryan Whitney. Ryan Whitney's on this list. <laughs> but any, anyways, uh, I got a bit off track. 30 minutes on average in four games is really bad. They overplayed McDavid bad that series. He had, he had four points in four games. He didn't play well. He had a minus two. This kind of where, this this is where you can kind of like go into it from a top forward getting a minus two. You can tell he wasn't playing well. Now he's a plus nineteen this season, but still. All right, I, I got a bit off track, but I want to know what you guys think. Do you think McDavid is a better player, or do you think Crosby is a better player overall? For me, I really don't know for sure because of the such different age gap and. Just how much more time Crosby has been in the league than McDavid. But I still think McDavid. I think McDavid overall is the better player. McDavid hasn't hit his prime yet. Just think about that. The average time where a player hits their prime is 29 years old. 
And Crosby's stats from when he was 29. Um, 89 points in 75 games, not the greatest. It seemed like he kind of hit his prime pretty early on. Um, but for most players, you hit that prime when you turn 29. Every single season that McDavid has played, his point totals have kept going up and up and up. 48 and 45, 99 and 82, 108 and 82, 115 and 78, 97 and 64, 105 and 56, then 123 and 80. He keeps getting better and better. He is constantly becoming a better player. Every single season, McDavid is just constantly increasing his point totals. Well, that didn't happen with Crosby. It just kind of stayed for a while until his injuries happened. Then it kind of went down. It's like kind of also, I'm not looking at individual rewards, all right? The awards are really stupid. But if you want to talk about them, I will talk about them. McDavid has won two Hart trophies. He's won three, um, three Art Ross trophies. He's won three Ted Lindsay trophies, all right? Now, we look at Crosby. Crosby, in total, he has won, looks like, two Hart trophies. He has won um, four Ted Lindsay trophies. He won a Mezzi, He won the Messier. I think it's still called the Messier, right? Yeah, Mark Messier Leadership Award. He won that once. Um, he's won the Art Ross one, two times. He's won the Conn Smythe twice he didn't win it in 2008 by the way i think i think malkin won it that year um he's made the all-star all-star one team he's made it one two three four five times or four times to all-star rookie once that's the exact same for mcdavid he made all-star team three in 2019-20 i don't know how but he somehow did um, McDavid's been a finalist in the heart three times, it looks like, which is really good. That, that's really good. Um, somehow he gets Selkie votes. I don't really know how. I could see, um, why Crosby would, but I don't understand how McDavid really gets a lot of Selkie votes, but I digress. Um, I know... It looks like um, McDavid also not McDavid Crosby won their Richard. Not surprising. And, and Cro- McDavid's never going to win their Richard if he's on a team with Drysital. I'll say that now. Um, or if Matthews is still in the league. <laughs> but when it comes to awards, obviously Crosby's going to have a bit of a better palette. But Connor McDavid's is very close, and that's with ten less years of experience. So. Yeah, very good for Cross for McDavid. I do think McDavid is a better player at the two overall. I think that'll stay like that for years to come. I don't care if you agree with me or not. It's just my opinion. That's why I want you guys to tell me your opinions. Um, I'll put up something on Spotify for my Spotify listeners, which I'm guessing is one. Um, I'll put I'll put something onto my Instagram. I'll put something onto Twitter, most likely. Um, I'll put something on pretty much everything. I don't know when this episode will be released. I'm doing a big bulk of episodes because when my girlfriend gets back, I'm not going to have as much time to do these episodes as I would now when I'm basically home alone and I'm doing overnight shifts and all that. So, yeah. Um, Again, let me know. You can DM me on Instagram or Twitter. I have both of them in my bio, I believe, on Anchor. So, on my YouTube, I don't have my Instagram linked on there actually but we did make a YouTube channel or I made a YouTube channel um, it's called Nurse Talks Hockey um, as you would probably assume you know because that's what we are um, I don't know how it's going to work out I don't have a webcam so I can't do I have I have a MacBook and that webcam sucks so I can't really do that yet um, I had the money for a webcam but I'm very cheap so I don't really want to do that. I I have <laughs> I have enough money to be out of work and be able to survive normally for multiple months. 
which I know isn't the case for a lot of people, unfortunately, um, at my age. But I don't want to buy a webcam. I'm really cheap with my money, so I'm kind of just waiting to see if I can find a good deal on one. Um, then I'll start doing all that sort of stuff. I think webcam will make me get a lot more viewers, a lot more people interested, instead of just having the Nurse Talks Hockey um, square on the screen while I'm talking. So, yeah. If you don't know my Instagram, it's um, Noah Z Wilson 72 I'm, ge- I'm going to be making a Nurse Talks Hockey Instagram at some point. Right now, it's not up. On Twitter, I'm not doing a Nurse Talks Hockey Instagram, or Nurse Talks Hockey Twitter. I don't want to deal with that. I had the icebreakers up for a while, and that just did not that that did not pan out the way I wanted it to. So I'm just gonna stick with my main one. It's Noah Z Wilson seventy two, I think, on that one too. But I think it's Noah underscore Z Wilson or Noah underscore Wilson seventy two. So um, check those out. And if you guys want to message me, ask me different hockey questions or ask me anything, just message me on those. Um, I don't use Facebook very often. I posted on Facebook once, and that's because I was, I just felt like it, because I, I got a dog, so I wanted to show my family my dog. Um, and yeah, so Instagram, Twitter are the best ways to reach me. I have my email in my um, YouTube. If you go to the About section, um, you can view the email address for business inquiries. Please, if you, if you want to email me. Don't just email me something stupid. Please email me something that doesn't just say like, "Oh, I, oh, you're such a bad creator. Oh, you, you, you should do this and this." Uh, I, I don't, I don't want suggestions for like webcams to use. Please don't do that. If you have suggestions, please let it be about making this podcast better, making the YouTube channel better just making it better don't just suggest something stupid i i don't like i don't want to use that word a bunch but i think if i just tell people don't suggest something that's not going to help people are going to suggest stuff that doesn't help if i say don't suggest something stupid people will probably still email me something stupid if people decide to email but please don't Uh, please anyways um for those of you who don't know or haven't really checked Um, This podcast is available on a number of different podcast websites and apps now. The only one we're not on is Amazon Music because I'm having a lot of trouble with that right now. Um, It's been a bit of an issue. I know we're on Overcast because Overcast is um, part of Apple Podcasts, and we are on Apple Podcasts. We are on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Google um, Overcast, Castbox, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and Stitcher. My personal favorites to use. I really like using Anchor, Spotify, um, Apple, and Castbox. I think those are really easy to use. Um, so if you are looking for a different podcasting app or website to use, I would suggest those. Um, I think with Apple Podcasts, you probably need an iPhone to do that. If you don't have an iPhone, use Google Podcasts. I haven't used that before. Um, if you just want a third-party app, Spotify, Anchor, and CastBox are very good. I really like CastBox. Um, I'm not getting paid to say any of this. I just really like CastBox. I think they have a really good way of finding um, podcasts that you'd like. So if you want a different app, please use po- CastBox if you want a third-party. Um, Anchor and Spotify are together. Apple Muse, Apple Podcasts, and Overcast are together. So yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this longer episode, and I'll see you guys later.